Hello, welcome to Geeking Out with Shad. And yes, the sun is in my eyes a little bit here. Today I'm going to talk about the controls between three different vehicles, including the infotainment system, as I hear it called, I guess, information and entertainment <laughs> combined. Um, but they're the big touch screens. And then all the controls for like windows, doors, um, climate controls and all of that stuff. Uh, we're gonna go talk between the Volkswagen ID4, my Bolt EUV, and we're gonna compare to the Toyota Tacoma, <laughs> which also has a pretty decent system in it. So we're just gonna compare and I'm gonna talk about the likes and dislikes that I have between them. Let's start with the Chevy Bolt. This is the one I know the most and the Tacoma, the Volkswagen, I'm still kind of learning, but we'll go through it. <laughs> okay, when I get in, plays this little bit of music, animations, all that stuff. Um, I believe um, the Volkswagen also does something similar. Um, I don't think the Tacoma does, not until I start it. Um, so we're going to start this thing up just so we can we're gonna talk about the infotainment i don't know i just don't know if i like that word but what else are we supposed to call it right um first and kind of related to the other controls so mainly the main Radio controls here um let's see see now watch this has been matching <laughs> so i know to wait <laughs> until the second round of the radio coming on to turn it off now that's kind of funny let's turn off uh climate um okay so let's first talk about the screen the screen's really s reactive it's super fast um and you have all these different things on there android auto is cool i like that i don't have to plug my phone in on this car i do have um <laughs> the charger cable here because i have a pixel 5 and for some reason um it's not happy with the um with the wireless charging um and i'll have to test another phone on it because hopefully it's not the wireless charger itself and it's mostly the phone i'm um, sorry about the sun but it is kind of coming in right there i'll try to avoid it um so we have this um i do like it that um android auto comes or hooks up with, without plugging it in um and that's also the same case in the volkswagen um it's got the energy um screens here i've talked about them things like that i don't want to get fully into all of these different things here's audio controls um things like that i do want to talk about some funky behavior which i find kind of funny is over here on the left you have this dial so this is going to be volume audio on and off this will take you to the home screen now that's one other funny thing I, i'll mention real quick before i get into this dial is if i'm on the home screen and i hit the home button it goes to audio for some reason. Kind of weird. You'd think it would either go to the last screen you were on, right? So it gets me to home, but it always goes to audio if you're in the home screen. My expectation would be that I hit home and I just stay here. <laughs> I don't go anywhere, but for some reason they set it up. Now this is the other odd thing. This dial will toggle through each one of these screens trying to make sure the sun isn't going to affect us. Um, right now, what I find interesting and just kind of weird. So I would expect, okay, I hit this check and it goes to the information screen. I would expect that I could turn this dial and toggle through different selections here and push the check button. That would be my expectation, but watch what happens. It turns on, it changes the radio station, yeah, actually, white which and is, like, crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it that makes no sense whatsoever, so whatever. I mean, hopefully they do updates to this and improve it or whatever, but why in the world would it just change my radio station when I turn that when I'm on this screen? So, a little pet peeve there. Um, aside from those two things, I really think, speaking of, <laughs> this is decent. Um, another thing that I pet peeve is the temperature. I like having the car temperature. So this is outside temperature from the car. 
I wish it was over here on the dashboard. They actually, there's actually space for it right there um, that it could be sitting there rather than over here. And what I don't like is when I go to Android Auto, it now gets covered up. Now, Android Auto gives me a temperature, but this is like the regional weather station temperature as to where this is like the car outside temperature where the car is at. I'd rather have this one than the regional weather temperature. Um, I just wish that was in a place where it was always visible. If you look over here, I keep getting the sun on there, but if, if you look over here, um, you see the time and you see the time here. I always have the time available for me. So I wish the temperature was over here. And maybe there's a setting where I can get it there, but we'll see. Um, so, um, so that's kind of your general infotainment. You got phone controls, navigation, things like that. This navigation, if I remember right, goes to the GM one, not to Android Auto. I will show you something in the Tacoma that's really cool that I like. Um, so down here are the climate controls. This whole panel, in my opinion, is excellent. It's all toggle buttons. If I want to turn on uh, heat, I just push this up. Heat is on. If I want to turn it off, push it down. Whoops. Wait. <laughs> See, I don't need... Oh, here it is. On, off. So this is... Okay, sorry. So if I want... This is going to be the temperature. So if I hit it, it just turns on the system. But if I want um, heat... You know, again, I'm still learning this. I haven't used the climate controls a lot. I turn this on and then I can set the temperature and whether it, um, there we go. You see it switched to heat because it got to a high enough temperature. And then when I get here, it'll switch to AC when I get to below the temperature, right? So it's automatic there or I can push the buttons to override, right? But I like to be in this auto mode for the most part. Um, so uh, you got your windshield, your rear, in, inside circulation, things like that. Turning on the steering wheel, heated seats, heated and cooled seats. So down would be cooled, up is heated. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. You can change your levels off. Now we're into heated. So I really like these controls. I'm still trying to, you know, get used to them, but they're, you know, they're really cool. I like it that I don't have to do this stuff on the screen, that I can just toggle. And the more that I use these, especially as winter's coming, I'll just naturally be able to reach down there and click my settings um, without having to stare at it too much and focus on it too much. Anything I do here, I feel like I have to focus too much on what's going on and it distracts me from my driving. So I minimize what I have to do here. Um, turn off climate control um then we go over here and we've got the um auto lights i like that or i can turn them on um and then or turn them off so i can do it the old school way or i can just leave them on auto this system works really good as do most vehicles i've ever tested but gm has always done a pretty good job there's the light sensor up there and it will turn the lights on when you need to then you don't have to worry about it you don't forget things like that this is just your dashboard and so on dimmer um thing over here is your control panel for door locks windows and all of that so um <coughs> windows actually door locks are up here i lied <laughs> so lock unlock um pretty straightforward and then over here is mirror so if you want to adjust your left mirror you do that here you do use this little yeah you know, i would call it a joystick almost <laughs> not a joystick but a control pad similar to a video game controller um and then this locks the rear windows so if you have kids or something back there you don't want them opening the windows i don't know if it locks the doors at the same time you'd hope so um that or you maybe you do that with the doors themselves but most cars now have some way to make it so you can't open the back door um with from the inside um these are your typical window controllers the a means the two front ones are auto so they're auto 
down, auto up, which I do like. Um, the rear ones are just, actually, it auto downed, but it doesn't auto up. That's new to me, because, okay, so it's got that two level push. So if I just do one level, it moves a little bit. If I push it all the way down, it automatically goes down. That's interesting. I've never had rear windows in a car do auto down, but they don't do auto up. <laughs> it's interesting. And these are the same way. Half push, little movements, full push, auto down, auto up. So, well, learning a little thing more every day, but uh, weird that they do auto down, but they don't do auto up. Um, but just the fact they do auto anything is kind of amazing. Usually it's only the driver's side on a lot of cars that do the auto automatic up and down and then all the other ones are just you know manual you got to hold the button um steering wheel controls uh cruise control stuff i like how gm does this but wait toyota has a really slick system for cruise control that i really like but that doesn't mean i don't like this i do like this this is like if i'm doing the um adaptive cruise or um, super cruise i can determine how close i want to follow the car in front of me this is the super cruise button over here you have your phone controls and this is your toggle controls for this screen let's see if i can make it so the sun isn't blocking but you know i basically can toggle between the different menu selections i go to the left and can toggle between the different menus and then to select something you push the center of this and that selects it so now it's in audio mode um but i want inf information make sure i'm on the right selection so um that's super cool so you can basically control your dashboard you can look at your tire pressure range information all kinds of cool stuff there um i don't use it a ton but it is there um on the back let's see if i can show you our volume controls up down over here is uh mode selection so i can go from bluetooth to satellite to am fm and then this lever here right here is your regen extra regen so if i'm in if I'm in regular driving mode and I want to regen, I can pull the lever and it'll slow the car down. If I'm in um, one pedal driving mode, which is where I usually like to be, um, you can see the icon on the dashboard there. When I let off the accelerator, the car will slow down. And it will come to a complete stop and it's pretty aggressive but if i want it to be more aggressive i pull the lever and it'll be like almost twice as aggressive as slowing the car down so i kind of like that um really wish the sun wasn't in the position that it's in look at that i'm getting a phone call right now i'm gonna answer that be right back awesome well now you know the phone works <laughs> so um we come up here we've got controls these are the for the shade i can close it um these controls open and close the sunroof or moonroof whatever you want to call it lights and then here's the OnStar stuff, same as all GM cars that have OnStar. And then the cool video mirror or regular mirror. You can actually zoom in and out, whoops, zoom in and out if you want um, and change settings on that. I'm not gonna mess with that. I'll show you the mirror someday um, and so on and so forth. So I would say this is a pretty good system. It's not perfect. I, obviously there's some weird quirkiness with the radio wanting to dominate this thing and it even wants to turn on automatically every time i start the car and it does it like twice it's kind of funky so uh, hopefully that stuff they'll work out or whatever so um yeah that's the chevy bolt let's go look at oh shifting um forgot to talk about that park button here's a uh, regen braking to go into drive, neutral, reverse, you just pull back on these, really simple. Um, this is parking, parking, like locking the brakes. 
sport mode, traction control, lane keeping assist, all that. And up, up here is the, the pad. So those are all the controls for this car. Um, let's talk about the Volkswagen. That one's a bit more quirky. Okay, now I just got in the Volkswagen. I haven't done anything yet that's interesting about this car is okay it also likes to turn the radio on automatically okay <laughs> i guess more people must like to listen to the radio than i do i mean i do listen to the radio but i like to be able to turn it on when i want to listen to it but <laughs> anyway so uh here's what happens I have to put my foot on the brake pedal. I don't, there is a push button start, but you don't need it. You moment, as long as I have the key in my pocket, the car has now started and the seat slides forward. So that I find kind of interesting. I do find it interesting that the steering wheel is turned and not in power mode. See, this is where I haven't played around with this car enough to really, uh, get used to it but i am kind of surprised let me see something here do i have to oh there we go okay <laughs> i actually have to like put it into a drive mode oh yeah okay so once i put it in park the steering wheel tightens back up again okay so power steering does not work until i put the car into drive mode which is kind of interesting i suppose i wonder if i had it in which i'm just now i'm just playing around and you're learning as i'm learning let's put it in neutral okay so but it, the moment it's in park the steering wheel goes into non-power mode so it's stiff and it's <laughs> yep okay let's talk about the controls that's not what this is about so um so that says goodbye i'm not done yet so okay the volkswagen <laughs> Is, is very different it's got these controls up here and i can hardly like read them here's volume there's power so that's again the radio and then volume and these are like touch sensitive and then these i believe are the seats i'm saying i believe because i don't know yeah so <laughs> so i'll be honest um, this car requires a pretty steep learning curve to figure out how all this stuff works. It's kind of interesting. Um, like, I don't understand, um, yeah, I have no idea, to be honest. Okay, so, <laughs> you have your typical screen here, it doesn't seem, oh yeah, not quite as responsive as the Chevrolet, but uh, as the Bolt, but it's pretty good, right? Um, phone, charging, all this stuff, Android Auto, just like um, my Bolt EUV. It's cool because Android Auto is Android Auto. It's always the same because it's coming from my phone, not from the vehicle. So I like that because I can be, you know, no matter what vehicle I get in, it's always going to work the same. Um, let's go back here. Um, settings, all of that stuff. One cool thing you can do with this vehicle. Let's see if I can get to it quick enough. I don't want to spend... Yeah, see. A little slower as you can. No, that's not it. Um, gosh, where is it? Oh, ambient light. <laughs> you can change like the interior lighting. And since it's not dark and the lights aren't on, you don't see it, but there's all this glowing. You can change colors, you can customize it. It's kind of funky. Like this car is pretty decked out. So right off the bat, not sure what those things do. <laughs> climate is here. Now this is another thing. If I push the climate, it brings up this screen and then, um, I can do my things. Again, it's kind of confusing. Oh, maybe, hold on. Maybe I have to have climate running and then these are the individual controls for each seat that you can do here, or not seat, but uh, passenger because this is a dual climate system. So I bet you that's what those do is this. So once I have the heat on, which I don't, I can set the temperature for that side of the car, the temperature here, and these little touch buttons will also do that. Heated seats there. Um, 
I don't believe these are the heated seat controls. Um, so you do have to go to the screen to do heated seats. Um, and then you can set climate, steering wheel, all that. I'm not 100% a fan of having to do that here. But the Volkswagen does do this other thing, which is kind of in an odd place, is over here on the left. Some of these more urgent things. So if you need to clear your windshield, here's normal speed, that's max speed, and then rear um, would be there. So they offer those three options, <laughs> and I'm not sure what that is. Maybe some kind of light thing, and then light mode. So these are probably headlight related. Do not know. <laughs> Somebody knows, you can mention it in the comments. Um, I'm going to talk about this here in a minute. It's very interesting. Um, so that's these controls. Um, since I brought up shifting kind of late in my video on the Bolt, um, the shifting on this car is really weird. It's this dial. So if I put my foot on the brake and I turn this forward, that puts me in drive. That puts me in regen. This car does not come to a complete stop on regen. It comes to a three mile per hour roll. So you always have to put the brake on at the very end. It does have this hold feature to where once you put the brake on and stop, you can take your foot off the brake and it'll sit there. It won't roll like a typical automatic. But, um, whoops, I was gonna go. And then in drive mode, drives like a normal car, like it'll coast and stuff. Then you turn it backwards to go into reverse. As awkward as this initially was, it's actually quite intuitive because you twist it forward to go forward, backwards to go into reverse. Really simple. You just have to remember that that's where it's at, right? And it does the rear camera stuff, things like that. It doesn't have that aerial view that the Bolt has, but it does give you warnings. And when you get close to something, they'll start to beep or whatever. So that's, to me, actually a little more helpful than just seeing a visual thing. But... The Bolt does also beep and warn you, and it shows you the aerial view of the car, an actual video of the car, which is kind of weird. But um, So we'll go back to park. All right, so that's how the shifter works, um, so on and so forth. Vents, all that stuff. Okay, so we've talked about all these controls so far, except for these guys. <laughs> oh. Yeah, your door locks, pretty straightforward. One thing I don't like is like looking at those icons, you know, the, the other icons they show an unlock lock and a lock lock. I don't really know which one is which just by looking at them. I guess that's locked and that's unlocked, but it's not super intuitive for my eyes because I don't see as well when it comes to these little tiny things. Um, so, um, this dial pretty straightforward that's left mirror right mirror adjustment what was so strange is it's got it goes down here to this corner and uh that's heated mirror so if you want your mirrors heated i think that's what that is and i'm not sure what oh that's okay <laughs> so if you want to bring your mirrors in you go into that corner so if you're parking or something like that but then you have your normal adjustment modes and then your neutral mode, which does nothing. All right. So I'm not a major fan of the system. I'm going to talk about these door locks in just a second. Um, so far, not so terrible, although I think it's interesting. There's the, some climate things over here, some over here. It's not really clear what these buttons are, all that stuff. But... Um, my biggest pet peeve are the windows. Notice there's only two window buttons here, not four. Like every car I've ever been in has four window controls, except for this one. See where it says rear? So I already had this happen to me once where I reached and I'm driving, of course, so I'm not like 100% paying attention. And I touched this and then I went like this and I'm like, wait, I want my window to open. Why is the rear window opening? And it was accidental that I touched this because I'm driving and looking forward and I'm reaching and just giving a brief look and I accidentally touched this rear, not realizing it. And then I'm opening the rear windows, but then when it's off, it opens the front wheel windows. 
super weird uh, <laughs> UI, if you want to call it that. Let's see if it will automatically. Okay. So it does auto on all windows, which is kind of cool. Auto up, auto down. But if you wanted to do all the, the front windows and the back, you'd have to, yeah, it's just, it's weird. You have to hit that button. And I think my pet peeve is, is it's close enough to my fingers where it's act, it's easy. It's weird that it's not easily coming on right now, but it it's easily triggered. And then you think you're gonna open your window and then you open the back window and so on and so forth. Now that I know how it works and I, if I accidentally hit it and I, I know what's going on. I can close the back window and then hit it again and not have to look too much at it. But that, I don't like this. I wish there were just the four buttons, to be honest. <laughs> um, it's definitely a weird system. Okay, steering wheel. No controls back here. Over here, no controls. So there are no controls on the back of the steering wheel. All of them are on the front. This is going to be um, your cruise control. I have yet to use cruise control. This car does have, um, I don't know what it's called in this car, but it has the automatic driving that's much closer to what Tesla does, where it'll do everything for you. Um, we'll have to test that at some point. Mode, I'm going to guess, is going to be radio mode. Not 100% sure. Over here is going to be your, um, let's get the car on. Please activate main switch. Oh, no, it's this is cruise related. It's got adaptive cruise control. Um, yeah, not sure. I'll figure that stuff out. Um, not super clear. It's almost like you have to learn everything. This center button looks like it's the distance and range one, all that stuff. Um, over here is going to be the menu look that's volume very interesting oh there we go now we get toggling back and forth on this view see this is kind of me learning as i go um i've only driven this car a couple of times and i i'm not necessarily a huge fan of the controls so why can't i go up and down or what is the up and down for see it just yeah, not sure. Uh, phone, obviously, view, so on and so forth. Um, that pretty much covers this car. So both the Bolt and this car are 2022 EVs. Um, and they're, you know, trying to push their latest, greatest tech, all that stuff. Oh, I didn't talk about up here, but you have... You know, your light controls, that must be like if you need to call service, something like that. Uh, this is going to be your dome light controls. These are just touch. Um, you don't have to push them in or anything like that. That's the top. You basically, if you want to open the shade, you just run your finger along there and it opens the shade. Um, this window does not open though. That always remains closed so it's not like a sunroof where you can open and close the window um, the mirror has nothing on it it does have auto sensing so if you have brights in the back it'll dim auto dimming it'll dim um, it doesn't have any fancy video mode or anything like that um, oh there's a sos button too so <laughs> i don't know what the wrench is i don't want to push it though <laughs> um, <laughs> be like calling somebody and not realizing it so there you have it. That's the Volkswagen. Um, pretty neat car. I haven't done a full review of this car yet. Wow, that thing takes a long time. Um, I will do a full walkthrough and overview of this car like I did the Bolt uh, EUV. Um, but right now I'm just talking about the controls and comparing between the three vehicles. Three vehicles? Did I forget how to count? Three vehicles. Um, Let's go look at the Tacoma. Um, it isn't the fully loaded decked out. It's kind of a hodgepodge of, of things. Um, I bought it in 2020, so it's the latest generation Tacoma. Although I believe, I don't know if it's for 2023 or 2024, 
they've got a new generation Tacoma coming out. Um, so, but let's look at the one I have, still a recently new vehicle, and we'll talk about the controls. And I'm gonna talk about what I really like about how that bike, how bike, <laughs> how that vehicle is set up. Okay, I am now in the Tacoma. Got in, the only thing I see illuminated is the odometer. Nothing else is like animated or turned on yet. And I need to start it. Unfortunately, with this vehicle, I actually have to start the engine and it has to sit there and idle for me to do this review, which is kind of the negative of um, internal combustion engine vehicles is you pretty much have to be idling <laughs> and running the engine to really have things functioning. Um, there are some now that have the start stop feature and stuff. So that's a slight improvement. Also notice this in order to start it. <laughs> what is this strange thing? Oh, I think I remember these. It's called a key. <laughs> I got to stick that in the ignition. Here's another thing. It's a manual transmission. And I have a clutch over here. So in order to start it, I gotta push in the clutch. I make sure that's in neutral. It doesn't have to be right now, but I do anyway. Start it. Now it's running and now it does a radio. Gosh, <laughs> the bane of my existence. Radios that just come on automatically. Um, this one comes on automatically because I was probably listening to it when I turned it off. If I shut off the truck and restart it now that I turned off the radio, the radio will not automatically come on. Um, so now we see the initial screen. We've got, uh, imagine that, analog dials, things like that. So this is going to be a bit more old school, but it does have some really nice modern features so it's this kind of hodgepodge of old school obviously i got the manual transmission um it's got the old pull lever brake um i have believe it or not i have no idea what the automatic transmission tacoma is like i don't know if it has the shifter here or on the wheel or anything i just have no idea because i've never been in one um so you can tell i haven't driven this in a while because it's got the <laughs> um stick on there and stuff um typical mirror it has auto dim so i don't have to have the little lever um controls here uh dome light control so when i open the door it's just a switch this one has a cool sunglass drawer which i like these are just touch so pretty basic but that's my emergency call thing all more modern cars kind of have that you do have to pay if you want that service um one thing with this is if I want to use Android Auto, let's go home. Oh, this is the home screen. Let's go to menu. <laughs> this is the one that shows you all the options. I actually have to plug my phone in in order to do Android Auto. So that is a difference. Unlike the other two cars were... Okay, interesting. Once I did Android Auto <laughs> or plugged my phone in, it uh, disabled my video so I got cut out <laughs> so anyway so now I'm here I'm watching my video so the phone is plugged in now and that's how I get to Android Auto again it's the same system so I'm familiar with it whatever here's what I think is cool I'll show you this in a second if I go to home and I want to navigate I hit this map button and it goes to Android Auto um if i had the toyota system i was paying for it it would go to that too but it defaults to the one that i'm using i kind of like it that it's a useful button even though i don't have the toyota navigation system the other thing i like is i love all the buttons along the side i got phone if i want to go right to the app screen i can go there menu screen i can hit these physical buttons to get there um that's probably my favorite thing. Audio, I can go right to audio, select my selections, so on and so forth. Um, I love that. Volume control right here. I can push this to turn it on and off. Tune right here. So kind of old school in the sense that I could tune the radio. 
do this like I used to do many, many years ago before all these systems were around. So I love this system and call me older, but I love it that there's all these buttons that take me to the very specific item I want to do. I can seek for new um, stations. I can track if I have uh, MP3 or whatever. This doesn't have a disc player, so I'm assuming you're going to track with MP3s or something. Um, things like that. And then here's the more awesome stuff that I love is I come down here and I have all these dials here. Of course, this is a truck, right? So I can switch to four, four high, four low over here. And that's cool because like if I need it, you know, I just reach down and grab that thing and turn it. I can focus on my driving because usually when I need to get into four by four, I can't like be monkeying around trying to figure out where it's at. Um, this right here, um, rear, uh, that isn't rear window. That's a mirror defrost. Uh, this doesn't need rear window defrost. This is turning on and off the charger. It does have wireless charging, believe it or not. A manual transmission, wireless phone charging, but you do have to turn it on and off. It's not always on. Um, climate controls, fan, temperature, the mode, super simple internal ac you know internal external air like just probably because this is what i'm accustomed to for so many years of driving i love it i love just being able to reach down and control with these buttons and not have to like figure out this stuff i would say the bolt is decent with the little toggle buttons but i can't just crank my fans on full blast i don't have to go toggle 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 I can crank temperature, hot, crank temperature, cold, you know, flip to my different modes, right? And I actually get good enough to where I know if I go all the this way and two clicks back, I get the um, vent and the feet. And I know that if I go all this way and back two clicks, which are my two favorite modes, I get feet and windshield, right? So those are uh super nice because i can memorize them come over here i've got my traction control i'm gonna unplug my phone from the car and it's probably gonna disable the video let's see what happens it didn't disable the video nice okay so over here traction control um this is there's actually a, a 120 volt outlet in the bed again this is a truck so i can uh turn that on and plug things into it auto headlights again so if i have the high beams on i can turn those on and it will um turn off the high beams when traffic comes um this is again the bed light um and i can set it so it'll turn on when i open the door or i can flip it on or off um controls over here um windows front ones are auto and then of course, this is the dial. You turn it left to adjust the left mirror. You turn it right to adjust the right mirror. Um, locks, window lock, um, rear doors are not, uh, or rear windows are not auto. Um, so very simple, straightforward controls. Now we come to the steering wheel. Um, I do have controls over the what's displayed in the screen just by toggling through these buttons. Um, and then I push the center to make my selections, um, air pressure, um, things like that. This is my fuel economy. I pay a lot of attention to that cause I'm kind of a weenie when it comes to fuel efficiency. It's probably why I got an electric car, right? <laughs> That's my daily driver. I don't even like the fact that I'm sitting here idling to show you all this stuff. Um, here's cool buttons. This is my range. Um, when I'm using um, adaptive cruise and my lane keeping, I can adjust this. I have it so it's just beeping. I don't like it to grab the steering wheel, um, but I can set it so it like helps steer a little bit too. Um, and then this is, I forget what this button does. I always do, um, but <laughs> it must not ever use it. So um, one thing this truck does have that a lot of vehicles don't and someday i'll show you this so this has cruise right um and i love toyota's cruise control i had a 2008 
Toyota Sienna, exact same little controller. You push this button in to start your cruise. I'll turn it on and off. You push it down to set. You push it up to resume. Push this in to dis and disable. But the coolest thing is, is like I, I have my cruise on. I'm doing like, you know, 70 or something. And I want to, I need to turn my cruise off. All I do is pull this back and it disengages the cruise. And then when I want to go again, I put it, push it up to resume. And I'm super used to this system and I just intuitively flip it around when I'm doing cruise. I love it. Um, probably one of the best cruise systems and it's out of the way back here. It's its own little lever, things like that. Um, intermittent wipers and all that controls. I think in all three cars, they're pretty similar. Headlights, this does not have auto headlights. A little bit of a bummer. I like auto headlights, so I have to remember to always turn them on. Um, it does have driving lights and stuff, so um, that's fine. So this is the Tacoma. Pretty straightforward, <laughs> pointing north, like apparently. Um, and yeah, it's, I honestly want to say out of the three vehicles, this is the best system when it comes to controls. Um, as we move into this kind of EV era, it's like kind of, I feel like they're pushing too much to trying to make all this touch screen and, and fancy up everything. And it's like, they could still keep things pretty standardized and pretty basic, but they want to get into all this fancy stuff. I'd say again, the Chevrolet not being too bad, the Bolt EUV, I feel like I still have enough physical controls. The Volkswagen, it confuses me all day long and <laughs> every time I get in it, I haven't driven it en enough times to get kind of really accustomed to it, but every time I get in it, I get more confused. Like, what does what, where is this? What's that? And what are these windshield controls and stuff or whatever, right? For blowing air on the windshield on the left or whatever. So it's, and it's mixed in with some other controls. So you're kind of like, well, that's interesting. Very, very, interesting thinking on their part as far as like the design i am a software engineer i deal with ui ux all the time in the internet world with uh, web applications websites um, and other applications so when it comes to cars it's the same kind of deal controls ui ux right like <laughs> how intuitive is it how do you use it things like that um super important and i feel like you know, if I was to rank these, I'd rank this as number one, physical buttons. And then even when it does come to what the, the, we call this infotainment, they have these rows of buttons that get you right where you want to be for the essential things, um, which I really like. Um, Toyota, I hope you don't like go away from this kind of system when you start doing EVs. I know you got one coming out. Um, and again, dials buttons love it love it love it um again this doesn't have automatic climate control it's still the manual system so what's interesting about this truck is that when i say it's a hodgepodge it's kind of like it's got some really modern you know cutting edge features like the adaptive cruise control the um wireless charging and that kind of stuff mixed in with old school dial buttons that don't let you set the temperature or whatever um, I'm sure there's a more upscale model of uh, the Tacoma where it does have that stuff, but I haven't been in one. I personally kind of like this mix, and it's something I'm used to. I'm 55 years old. It's something I've dealt with most of my life. Younger people, they might struggle with this, and they might find these newer, more modern uh, controls more intuitive to them. I mean, it's, it's really... Um, interesting to see how different generations deal with things uh, my mom who is almost 80 she got in my uh <laughs> bolt uv and when she you know i was telling her a little bit about it and she told me i don't even think i could drive this car i would know how to drive this car or whatever. <laughs> kind of funny so there you have it just kind of a little discussion about controls uh, there are many many vehicles out there i've been in a tesla and the weird thing about the tesla is 
almost everything is on the touch screen and I really don't like that. Like I really, for some reason, it just, I not having it, hardly any buttons and you having to always go to the touch screen to do everything drives me a little nuts. So there's just different extremes between the vehicles and they all have their different approach. So it's gonna be an interesting time over the next, you know, probably 10 or 15 years. What is this gonna to evolve to? Are we gonna keep going in this direction of minimizing the physical controls and going mostly to these touchscreen things? Are we gonna start having more things on the steering wheel? Are we gonna start like, what are the gauges gonna look like? All that stuff, you know, it is gonna be very interesting and Honestly, as I get older, I'll probably have a harder time with the newer systems, but that doesn't mean they're bad. They're just different. <laughs> so there you have it. If you like this kind of content, I know this video is kind of long, but I did go through three different vehicles. So each one is probably, what, 15 minutes or so. Um, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. Peace.